Hey, it's Aaron from GameThrus.com, and I'm checking out Knock Knock, which is for friends and future enemies. It's a fast-paced, competitive game. Knock Knock is some Trinity Craft games. It's taken some of its inspiration from games like Uno and the sort, but puts its, its own kind of spin on it. Or how my girl saw it is it takes some of the elements of what they call Spicy Uno, have made some of those core mechanics part of the base game, instead of being things that, that folks have... Uh, Folks have house ruled into uh, becoming uh, official. Let me show you how it works. So very similar to a game like Uno, you're gonna have power-ups. And Knock Knock has its fair share of, of power-up cards here. So we have the wild card here, which can serve as any one of the suits. Suits and colors are the same. So people who are colorblind, they can look at the, the shape and not necessarily follow the color, which is nice. So each, so green is always going to be star, orange is always going to be square, so on and so forth. You have a U-turn, which changes the direction of play. You have swap hands, you can literally swap hands and make someone swap hands with you if you want to. It's, you don't have to do that. Uh, swap hands is also, like I said, swap hands is optional. You have skip, which skips a player. is also defendable, meaning if you have a skip, skip, you can sling it on to somebody else and not have it affect you at all. Plus one. Makes you take an additional card, very similar to skip. It's also defendable, meaning if you have a plus one, you can play it and then make the player after you pick an additional to what they already have done. So I guess that would be two. If they have one, the next player after them will have to pick three. We have slap. Slap is interesting in that I really was leaning towards maybe having people, not everybody not slap uh, the actual card when it comes out, just for fear of people smacking each other's hands. But it worked out okay. Slap is literally a card comes out everybody tries to slap the actual card, the slap card. Whoever slaps it last has to draw a card. Mimic, uh, mimic is when the player who plays it will either take their index finger and t take one of their fingers and touch their nose, uh, pull on their earlobe, or put their thumb and their hand to the side of their head and do an antler kind of thing. Like, uh, you can't see my face, but uh, you know, so. Uh, a good thing to do is maybe play it off like you're gonna do one and do the other quickly. Whoever mimics last, much like slap, has to draw a card. Somebody plays a mute card, your bias will be quiet, meaning no talking, no making, I guess, significant sound. You can sort of play it how you want to in your own home or with your friends. If somebody makes a sound, they have to draw a card. This, uh, the mute stays active until the player who played the mute card plays an additional card. Mute can also kind of be stacked where if somebody plays a mute on a mute, it eliminates that mute, but then the mute starts again from that player. Kind of stacked that way too. These are all of the, the power-ups in Knock Knock. Let me show you how it plays. Okay, we have a three-player setup. Everybody has seven cards, and you have two draw piles, so players can draw from either one, and then they can just discard to the center. I probably should mention why it's called Knock Knock. You have one card left, you would knock on the table to signify that you have one card left. If someone sees that you have one card left and knocks before you do, you have to draw a card. Also, you can formally ask any player in the game how many cards they have and they have to answer you accurately. The players would play with their hands like this, where you can't tell what they have, you just have to ask them how many cards you have and they're supposed to tell you. One additional uh, thing I didn't mention was there's also cutting in. So for cutting in, let's say the first player plays the orange seven. If one of these players also has the orange seven, not just the seven in any other color, but has to have this exact same card, even if it's not their turn, as long as they play it before the next player goes, they can quickly get rid of a card. That's not the case here, so I'm just gonna play uh, the one seven there. And, oh wow. How did they end up with all power-ups? I did shuffle these. <laughs> okay, well, I guess they're gonna do a wild and they're gonna make it, the color will now be green. So now it's back to this player. So we have the one green. Of course they don't have anything like that, but they do have a two. So they can play that two. Now, well, they have a lot of power-ups with which to choose. So now they're gonna do a mute. 
So now everybody can talk again, and now the first player can now vent their frustration and potentially having to pick up a card. But you can also stack cards. So now this player can thwart that one, put down another one, thus forcing this player to pick up three cards. One, two, three. And that is how Knock Knock is played. You play until you run out of cards. You can see the first player is already down to two. It does play similar to a game like Uno, but there, I feel like there's enough little tweaks and changes here to differentiate it just a little bit where there's eight different power-ups. So that's interesting. And then incorporating some of the very popular Uno add-ons. Uh, like able to stack cards, put out more than one, just put out a card if you have literally the same card for the next player plays. It's also a nice one. So it just it incorporates some of those other very popular uh, gameplay variants into the base game. Things I like. The card quality is really nice. They're not too thin, not too thick. Nice cards. I think the colors are fine. The, the cards look nice. It's really easy to tell what's what. Now I say that as somebody who is not colorblind. If you were colorblind or if you, if you are colorblind, you'd probably be focusing more on the shape, which does appear in two spots on every card. But I do like the fact that they made it accessible. That's important. I like the flow of the gameplay. It is very familiar. That that could be something that's a that's a good and maybe a detractor. I don't know. Depends on how you look at it. Me personally, I have played Uno, base Uno so many times. I like something that mixes it up, and I feel like this does a very good job. And because we've gotten into some disagreements in my home about what rules apply and what don't, this game already has baked in many of the rules that my kids like to incorporate. Being able to stack and defend cards and things like that. In addition to being able to just cut in between players if you have literally the same card, which is kind of crazy. So yeah, I like it. I think it's fun. It is familiar, but that's okay. I think my only real drawback is, and it's not really a drawback, it's a nitpick. The game plays three to 10. There's four reference cards, uh, you know, maybe five. So half of the players, potential maximum players could could have them. And then you could share in between everybody. Maybe an additional, maybe actually 10. Just to remind people, because there are eight different abilities. Once you play it, you'll get it. But the first you know round or two, you're kind of looking like, which one is this again? Which one is this again? Not a big deal. Like I said, it's a nitpick. That, you know, that, that's not, if I had one with something that was a little bit of a, oh, hey, why didn't they do this? It would just, this would have been maybe more reference cards. So, so that is Knock Knock from Trinity Craft Games. I like it. It's fun. You kind of know if you like this kind of game already, if you, if you like things that clearly was influenced by, and that's fun. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Check out more videos. Wear a mask. Stay safe. Be blessed.